Number 14. Suppose you exert a force of 180 newtons tangential to a 0.28 meter radius, 75 kilogram grindstone, which is a solid disc. Letter A. What torque is exerted? So here's a picture. Here's the tangential uh, force of 180 newtons. And this force is applied at a distance relative to the axis of rotation of this disc. And it's located, the axis of rotation is located 0.28 meters away perpendicularly from the uh, applied force. So that sounds like a torque to me, right? So if we had to find the torque, I mean, that's what it's asking. Um, we remember that torque is equal to force multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm or the perpendicular distance between that force and the axis of rotation. So I have all the variables I need, right? This one's really straightforward. So it's 180 multiplied them by 0 0.280. And so what do we get for the torque here? We get 180 times 0 0.28, 50.4. All right, so this is 50, 50.4, and that is Newton meters. Okay, so that takes care of letter A. Let's take a look now at uh, letter B. So it says, what is the angular acceleration, assuming negligible op uh, opposing friction? So now we have to think, well, I know the torque, all right, and how do I connect torque to angular acceleration? Well, via this formula over here on the right-hand side. This formula says that the sum of the torques will equal the moment of inertia of the object multiplied then by the angular acceleration. To solve for angular acceleration, this is just algebra, it would be the sum of the torques divided by the moment of inertia. Okay, now two things. I know the torque, uh, meaning the sum of the torques. Remember, there's only one torque in the problem because I said assume for part B at least, assume uh, uh, negligible opposing friction. So this is the only torque. So I know the numerator here. Next, it's the denominator. I need to know the moment of inertia. So in order to know the moment of inertia, you need to know what is the nature of the rotating object. Here they told us it is a solid disk. Okay, it's a solid disk. And therefore, you have to go to page 359 of your textbook and take a look at all those pictures and the moments of inertia for each rotating body there. And this would be the one to select, all right? It says a disc, which has uh, about a cylinder axis, meaning that the axis goes right down the uh, middle of the cylinder, okay? So this right here is our formula for moment of inertia. It's only one rotating object there, so therefore there's only, you know, one formula we need to consider. So now what I can do is basically take this and substitute that on in for I. Okay, so now it's going to be alpha is equal to the sum of the torques divided by then the mass multiplied by the radius squared, all divided by 2. And really what I can do too is let me, let me elaborate on the numerator. Let me, I know we already calculated what the torque is equal to. Um... But let me just plug in the various uh, variables because you're going to see what's going to happen here for the radius. So here it's the force multiplied by that perpendicular lever arm. In this particular case, the perpendicular lever arm was 0.28 meters, and that's also the radius of the rotating cylinder. Therefore, this and this are the same. So I can cancel that with one of those. And now we're left with accel uh, angular acceleration is equal to force. Divided, and I'm just going to rework this a little bit. So it's 2F divided by then MR. And that's your final formula. Some professors only want you to solve for the final formula. They don't necessarily want to know the answer. But all you have to do now is plug in your values here. So to get your final answer. So force was 180. The mass of the disk is 75. And the uh, radius was 0 0.280. So just calculate that now. And we have 2 times 180 divided by parentheses 75 times 0.28. And what do we get? 17.1 or so. Yeah, three six figs look good. I mean, maybe there should be two up here because this value technically doesn't have a decimal, therefore it should have two. But, you know, what I mean, I sh should have mentioned that over here too, but I think your text says sometimes this can have three. I, I don't, I'm confused. I don't know about you. But anyway, so if, if you need two sig figs here, obviously it's just 50. All right, at this point in the course, really nobody cares about sig figs. So um, anyway, so the final answer here with two sig figs would be 17 or with three, it would be 17.1. So that is radians per second squared. And great. 
All right, so that takes care of letter B. And now for letter C, let's see, it says, what is the angular acceleration if there is an opposing frictional force of 20 newtons exerted 1.5 centimeters from the axis? So now, the only difference in terms of this problem is that the sum of the torques is not just the torque that we found over here, right? There's now gonna be an opposing torque. So, I'm going to expand on uh, this equation right here, all right? So basically, the angular acceleration would be equal to, and actually, you know what, let me start. Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Angular acceleration equal to the sum of the torques all divided by that moment of inertia. Okay, the moment of inertia we already know is gonna be mr squared over two. And there are two torques now in the problem. One torque here that we calculated before, these are the values. Okay, so let me erase that now and let me plug in. We have then the force, I'll call it the force applied multiplied by that perpendicular lever arm. Then plus this new opposing force. All right, now that says that the opposing force, this frictional force is located 1.5 centimeters from the axis. So if I were to go to my picture and draw it in, maybe it'll be right about there. Okay, this particular distance now is going to be, uh, I'm gonna convert it into meters, 0 0.0150 meters. And it's going to oppose, right? So if the friction, excuse me, if the force applied is gonna rotate the disc counterclockwise, we have to have a frictional force that is going to rotate it. Why can't I get it perpendicular? There it is, it's gonna rotate it clockwise. So I'll call that F sub F. And that they told us was 20 Newtons, all right? Um, they didn't even say that this force is being applied perpendicularly to the lever arm, but I have to assume that. Otherwise, what angle is it? They didn't tell me, right? So I have to assume it's perpendicular. Now, when we plug it in, guys, remember that the force here, or the I should say the torque, is going to be negative. Why? Because this torque is applying a counteracting torque that is going to would rotate the disc clockwise, all right? So this will be negative in here. You can just change the sign to a negative if you want. It doesn't really matter. Actually, maybe I'll do that. It might just simplify things a little bit. So let me just minus, all right? And that will then be the force of friction and the perpendicular lever arm of that force of friction. And over down here, I'm gonna put a little A. All right, so now all we have to do is just plug in the values. So here we have 180 multiplied then by that perpendicular lever arm of 0 0.280 minus then the force due to friction of 20 uh, newtons, multiply them by that perpendicular lever arm of 0.15. All right, divide that whole th thing by now, the mass 75 multiplied by the radius squared of 0 0.280. And that whole now thing divided by two at the bottom. So alpha will now be, all we have to do is calculate it. So 180 times 0.28 minus then 20 times 0 0.015. That whole numerator divided by now, 75 times 0.28 squared, divided by two. All right, so we get about 17 now, right? 17.0. Uh, All right, so with three sig figs, and that'll be radians per second squared, with three sig figs, you will detect a difference, whoops. All right, but if you had two sig figs, this answer would have been 17, this answer would have been 17, so it doesn't look like you have any difference, but it all depends on, you know, whatever. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in, all right? Hope this video helped. Please help us out, help us grow. Hit that subscribe button, tell your friends, hit the like button. We'd appreciate it so much, and I'll help you in the next video. Take care.